The unmanned system, the autonomous system, and the information that it gathers and then brings back to our sailors, our Marines, our soldiers, our airmen, it doesn't matter. They then use that information to make their war fighting better, more effective, more affordable. I think you're going to see a lot of unmanned systems in all the domains, air, surface, ground, and undersea being used both to feed the intelligence community, to give information to the tactical warfighter and then to act as the virtual wingman. The problem, current proprietary unmanned systems don't communicate with each other, which equals extra costs. With many more unmanned vehicles in the fight, there will be huge amounts of data for force decision makers to sift through, and there will be challenges. Challenge number one is to enable growth of unmanned systems without growth in operational costs. Challenge number two is to enable common control of unmanned systems so they become interoperable. The Office of the Secretary of Defense, OSD, is focused on meeting those challenges. The information, regardless of where it comes from, it needs to be tied together and shared across our, our theater, our, our, uh, our fighting domain. This allows us to work more closely across the services. ONR, with a successful track record in bringing information seamlessly to and from the combat side and the control side of the house, resolved to meet OSD's challenge. First, ONR focused on collaboration with OSD, program executive offices, Navy programs, and warfare centers to be sure the right questions would be asked and the best solutions would be put forward. The goal? A common control system, or CCS, for unmanned vehicles available at the warfighter's fingertips. ONR's Wayne Paris focused on the agility CCS provides to the warfighter. The common control system uh, provides us the interoperability to be able to reach out uh, to get data from any vehicle that is out there, bring that data in, and make it available to anybody in the force. PMA-281 Strike Planning and Execution Systems brought their success with a 2011 CCS demonstration to the table. The common control system is software, and it is meant to, to be hardware agnostic. We'll, we'll ride on any type of hardware that, that you could imagine much like common applications that are able to run across different makes of smartphones. In order to test whether data would, in fact, be interchangeable from platform to platform, ONR conducted a limited technology experiment, LTE, in 2012, where participants came together to see how CCS would actually work in a simulated battle space. Jerry DeRosiers of Newick, the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, set the scene for the limited technology experiment. What we did was simulated uh, several uh, surface ships, six different uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles uh, flying, as well as MH-60 helicopters. And in this virtualized environment, we were able to fly all those vehicles, pull all that information, characterize that information, make it available across the force. Kathy Emery, Chief Architect for PEO Integrated Warfare Systems, sees multiple benefits of ONR's limited technology experiment. One of the things that we've really appreciated about working with ONR in these limited technology experiments is that we can take something out of it and very quickly insert it into multiple programs of record. The government standards set by OSD minimize software cost, maximize reuse, and allow ONR to facilitate unprecedented levels of collaboration to accelerate development we end up working with ONR directly. It's that collaboration that results in the rapid transition, which is why we call it the fastest pony in town. During the experiment, it was China Lake who had been working with PMA-281 on the West Coast and Cutta Technologies, a small government contractor on the East Coast, who would work their version of CCS to reach out and touch a designated UAV. How would ONR's limited technology experiment work? For Cutta Technologies, this was the chance to test their bi-directional remote video transceiver or BDRVT. BDRVT is a new idea or concept for the Army that's going to be propagated through the, all the services. Cutta Technologies developed applications or apps for the BDRVT during the limited technology experiment. 
David Barnhart is Director of Business Development for Cutta Technologies. And frankly, as this moves beyond just the aerial segment, and moves into surface vehicles, underwater systems, ground vehicles, the growth of this could be phenomenal. But from a business standpoint, we took a system that had been built over five years that cost tens of millions of dollars for the Army to build. We took that system, we broke it into services and rewrote it in this UCS in less than 30 days. Now there's an app store. Anybody across government, industry, anybody can use these without having to reuse it, without having to reinvent the wheel. So the LTE was very successful to us to demonstrate not only the ability to scale this architecture, but as well as show benefits financially to the taxpayer. OSD invested $450,000, out of which, with teaming with O&R on this, we saw an, a return uh, on investment of about $87 million. LTE results show that OSD standards will enable affordable growth and interoperability of unmanned systems for all the services. For the future, ONR under OSD direction will be moving towards a tactical cloud. These technologies are technologies that will be enhanced by our movement to the Naval Tactical Cloud. Being able to put unmanned Air Force and Navy capabilities together also creates new combinations of systems or kill chains for warfighting operations that can make the force more efficient. Someday in the near future, because of this effort, you'll have a sailor controlling an Air Force unit someday. You'll have an airman sitting at a desk controlling a naval uh, unmanned system. You'll have a, a Marine controlling an Army uh, soldier unit. That is what we will accomplish for today's fight and our future fight with this standardized effort. Give us interoperability, give us common control standards, and give us the information flow that we'll be able to reach to every service across DOD. That's our future.